Hi folks, we are going to do a torque problem um, and this one is going to be involved with building a mobile. So here we go. I want you to picture like the sort of mobile that is above a child's crib um, with lots of different things hanging from it and it will spin and rotate and have assorted weights on it. Um, the total mobile is three meters long. So this is a big art installation that's going to go into a library. So from one end to the other is three meters. Um, it is suspended from the middle, so it's got a rope attached to the middle, and the horizontal supporting rod has a mass of 200 grams. So right in the center, the CG of the supporting rod, I'm going to put a down force vector representing the weight of this object, which is 200 grams grams. And actually that's its mass, but I'll explain that in a moment. There is a 50 gram mass on the far left end. So over here there is a 50 gram mass. Um, and a 75 gram mass is 0.5 meters to the left of the center. So let's take a look at this. If it's 3 meters all the way across, that means half of this is going to be 1.5 meters, and 0.5 meters is going to be about a third of the way. So I'm going to put a 75 gram mass about 0.5 meters to the left of the pivot. Um, and a 100 gram mass is 0.75 meters to the right. So if this is 3 meters all the way across, then this side is 1.5. 0.75 meters is going to be exactly in the half, and let's make that kind of a fun, cool shape, and that will be a 100 gram weight. Now, the artist wants to add one more 50 gram mass to the mobile, and the question is, where should it be added? Well, if you look at this, first off, which side do you think, if you were building this, you would try and put it on? Yeah, I would put it on the right because it kind of looks like you got two weights over here. Maybe if you put a third over here, that would be a good place to put it. If you don't know where to hang that weight, I would just put it any old place. So I am going to give it a circle shape. I'm going to put it here and call it a 50 gram weight. All right, I'm going to make sure I've got all my distances in place. If this is 0 0.5, um, 3 meters all the way across, so from here to there is going to be 1.5 meters, and then this weight we are told is 0.75 meters from the pivot, and I want to know the lever arm of this one. That's my unknown lever arm. The way I'm going to do this is in order for this to be stable, the sum of the torques on it have to equal zero. What that means is all the torques making it pivot in the clockwise direction are going to be equal to all the torques that are making it pivot in the counterclockwise direction. So I am just going to make an equation immediately starting for each one of these weights at a distance. I am going to write down an equation for torque. And if you remember, torque is force times lever arm. So I'm going to start on the left end. I've, I'm going to call this, since it is my natural point that it's suspended from, I'm going to call that my fulcrum. That's going to be my pivot point. So here goes. I have got 50 grams, and the lever arm for the 50 is 1.5 meters from the weight over to the point of support, so 1.5 meters, plus what else is making it pivot this direction? 75 grams and its lever arm is 0.5 meters. Now what about the weight of the stick? The weight of the actual horizontal support itself is right through the pivot. It will not cause a torque. Yes, there's a weight, but there is no lever arm. So if you have a force, no matter how big it is, but the lever arm is zero, there is no torque produced. So I do not have to include that in my calculations. So these are the torques on the left side. So now let's work on the torques on the right side. On the right side, I'm going to have 0.75 meters times 100 grams plus 50 grams times an unknown lever arm, L. All right, let's go ahead and do my math. Uh, one and a half of 50 is 75 gram meters. Half of 75 is 37.5 gram meters. 0.75 of 100 is 75 gram meters plus 50 grams L. 
Now I'm in a weird sort of situation here because of the fact that I have 75 on this side and 75 on that side. I can simplify this whole equation if I subtract 75 gram meters from both sides. If I do that, those cancel essentially, and I'm going to end up with 37.5 gram meters equal 50 grams times L. So where am I actually going to place that unknown weight? Well, 37.5 gram meters divided by 50 grams. I get a lever arm of 0.75 meters. So where exactly should that 0.75 meters be? I'm measuring it from this pivot. It's going to be 0.75. Actually, I'm going to put my other 50 gram weight right directly below that 100 and it's going to be placed right there. One more thing before I leave this problem. Now, a couple of you, I can hear you yelling from here, and you're saying, Mary, 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 what are you doing? You've been really, really strict about units, and here you are not converting for two kilograms and not converting to newtons, because torque is force times lever arm. So this should be a force, and forces should be in newtons. Well, here's the honest to goodness truth. If you are not actually involving any other equations or any other formulas, um, then, my dear friends, you can play a little bit fast and loose with torque. Because if I went through the trouble of transforming every one of these into a weight in Newtons, all of that would cancel out. So be very careful when you do this, but uh, you can do it if all you're doing is summon torques and nothing else is involved. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.